Hey, so you get a quick Mesopotamia video podcast for review. So what do you need to know about these guys, Mesopotamians? Who were they? Well, you need to know a bit about their civilization, their religion, their political system, their language, and trade. So let's talk about that real quick. Their civilization, these were the people, these were the nomads that came from um, the uh, mountains of Z the Zagros Mountains, and they were doing really well. They were the nomads who kind of settled in that area, but realized they, they, were, they were doing well, but they were doing so well that the land that they had wasn't going to support them, so they had to move to where they could do some really major farming, which is the first thing that the Mesopotamians got good at. And they moved down from the Zagros Mountains into the valley, the Mesopotamian uh, the area we call now Mesopotamia, in between the two rivers, the yeah, and yeah, Tigris and Euphrates. Yeah, I heard you say it. Um, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, um, and they figured out that these rivers flooded periodically and and pretty much on schedule. And they figured out that once they flooded, they left behind some amazing stuff called silt, and the silt made the land really fertile. And they figured all this stuff out, and they grew great crops, and their civilization grew and grew and grew and grew. Uh, you're, you can't have a civilization unless you have two things. The first one being a surplus of food, meaning extra food, stored away food, and more babies. So, And you can't have one without the other. And so they had those things, and they grew, and we come into what uh, the first civilization that we looked at was Sumer, which is in the southern part of the Mesopotamian area area in between the two rivers and it goes from there um their religion the mesopotamian religion uh, across the board d despite the several uh, other empires that we looked at the religions were similar um they were polytheistic that means they pray to many deities or gods deities and gods are synonyms um uh the sumerians had three to four thousand different gods that they they prayed to. Um, that's part of a successful civilization that you're able to create a religion. Um, their political system, well they had city-states, you know that. Once uh, they figured out how to irrigate and farm and come together as a group, those groups closed themselves off. They created a, an area in which was governed independently despite the area that they were in uh, and they created city-states and some city-states had kings and which is a monarchy and some city-states had other types of government but most of them did have kings uh, and they also had a ziggurat uh, which goes back to the religious side of uh, their lives which was super important to them and the need ziggurat uh, or ziggurats uh, were intentioned to be the uh, temple of a certain god and each city-state had one major god uh, that watched over them and they, the biggest ziggurat would be for that god um, the language and trade. Well, let's start with trade. We know they had trade because they had language. It's kind of an interesting relationship with these guys. They created their written language, cuneiform, in order to keep track of their trade. So we know, A, they had a written language, and B, they had trade. They basically created cuneiform to keep track of who sold what to who. They were for receipts. Um, and they remember they used a stylus with a, a clay tablet. Um, and so they were super advanced and very into record keeping. Um, and we find many contracts and receipts, uh, archaeologists do, um, throughout the area and up in, all the way up into Turkey. Uh, recently a marriage contract was found up in Turkey. So let's talk about a couple of guys that are super important. First guy, you know this guy, you love him. Sargon of Akkad, the first emperor of the Mesopotamian area, the first emperor of Mesopotamia. Uh, we're going to end up calling it Akkad. And he unites for the first time the area, instead of having a bunch of city states that each have a, their own little kings, one, un, 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 <laughs> one united group of people. And it was immense, it was enormous, and that would be his downfall after uh, several generations of Sargon and Sargons and Sargon's sons and grandsons and great-grandsons uh, until they were taken over by the Assyrians. 
And so his major contribution to history is that he was the first empire building in the world, emp empire builder in the world. Another guy you know, you love him, Hammurabi. Hammurabi and his little code, Hammy and his little code. Uh, Hammurabi was another unifier of the area way later than Sargon. Uh, but he did something a little bit more different. He created central rule, um, which means that one law for everybody. And he wrote it down on a steel uh, made of basalt. Remember steel? It's a, a big uh, monument type thing that's carved into and it's meant to last forever so everybody remembers it. Well, he did that with his uh, code, his code of laws, 282 laws. And so everybody in his area, in his empire, could follow the same laws. Eh, you know. There's, there's some give and take in that. But for the most part, uh, we remember Hammurabi for creating central rule and one code of law for his entire empire. So that's a mini, mini review. These are the basics. Is this all you need to know? No. Should you know more? Yes. Will this help? Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't forget your notes. Don't forget your vocab. I'll see you later. Bye.